Hello, Moto America fans. This is Paul Carruthers, and welcome to our weekly podcast, Off Track with Carruthers and Vice. As I mentioned a few seconds ago, I'm Carruthers. I've got Vice with me here. He's actually not with me. He's in Ohio, and I'm in California, but, you know, you get the point. How are we today, Sean? Freezing my butt off, Paul Carruthers. Well, that's nice. I won't tell you that I've got shorts and a t-shirt on. It was seven below last night. Our pipes in the kitchen are frozen, and... uh, the guest we're having on, who normally is in warmer environs when we talk to him, he's back in his homeland, so uh, he's freezing his butt off, too, so you're the odd man out on that. Today. Seven degrees? It was seven below last night, and that's Oh, seven crazy. below. Wow, that's even worse. Yeah, it was seven below zero. I, it, it doesn't really get that cold that often here, but maybe once in a while. But no, I, it was like 24 below at my parents up in New York State, and I, I bet you, I'll say it, it's Kyle's on. Kyle, I bet it was cold, super cold up there. So, um, yeah, it's nuts. Well, let's talk a little bit about our guests and then we'll bring them on. I, everybody knows Kyle Wyman. He's our, well, he will be our defending uh, monster, or what am I saying? He will be our defending mission king of the baggers champion when we get started. And the cool thing is we're getting started at Daytona, which to me is just, I'm, I'm, it takes a lot for me to get excited anymore, but I'm really excited that we're going back to Daytona. So Kyle will obviously make his debut in the 2022 season at Daytona, and he'll be armed with a factory Harley Davidson. Again, he'll line up um, with his brother, Travis, who's also, uh, who's also on the factory Harley Davidson team. Uh, Kyle also finished ninth in the Moto America Superbike championship this year. And it was, it was a bit of a difficult year for him, mainly because he injured himself and in, in a bad way. I mean, it was, uh, he can talk more about it, but his elbow was, was pretty destroyed and he had to get surgery, et cetera. Uh, so he parked the superbike for a while, which turned out to be the right move uh, because he needed to win that uh, King of the Baggers championship. That was, that was target number one for him going into the season. And he was able to pull that off. And I think, a lot of that was um, because of the wise decision he made to uh, to lay off the superbike until that deal was done. So, let's bring Kyle in now and uh, and talk to him about uh, last year, this year. It's the, a lot of exciting stuff happened for you just this week, uh, Kyle. Yeah, thanks for having me on. It's it's been a lot of fun stuff happening, a lot of changes going into this year for sure. But uh, yeah, excited to be back with the Factory Harley Screaming Eagle team back on the road glides. And as, as you might have saw, they just came out with a, a couple models from Harley Davidson. Yesterday, they announced that we're kind of based around our King of the Baggers bikes. And yeah, it's really cool what they're doing and racing and, and pushing things forward. I mean, what a change when you think about it. It's, it, it kind of takes you back to the old days. And it's just funny that that it ends up being this whole King of the Baggers thing, which is new. We have incredible success with it. You know, the Indian and Harley Davidson jump all in. You end up getting a factory ride, you win the championship. But I mean, when I see stuff like what came out yesterday with the new bikes and, and they're inspired by, you know, your bike and the Baggers championship and, and, and ultimately Moto America and the series, I think it's just a huge boost, um, a huge boost for all of us. It's happened all in such a short period of time. I think just maybe a few days ago is probably the one year mark of when Harley first emailed me to, you know, to see if I was interested in riding a bagger. It feels like I've lived three years in that time, <laughs> you know, with how many things that have happened, how it started and where we are now, where they just launched these motorcycles. And yeah, it's, it's been a whirlwind for sure. And yeah, it's it's uh, it's really special to see that uh, there's a direct tie to uh, to racing and product with a manufacturer as big as Harley Davidson in a class that didn't exist 18 months ago. So something pretty special. You know, Kyle, we all watched that uh, the the launch video yesterday, and I I admit I watched a lot of the beginning of it, but then I kind of cheated and fast forwarded a little bit because I I knew that there was going to be a section about baggers in there. And the whole video is fantastic. I mean, I learned a lot about the new lineup this year, but that section on the King of the Baggers, I mean, that that was like 
movie theater production quality. That thing was high quality. You must be really proud of that, huh? Well, yeah, they don't cut corners when Harley's no. gonna gonna produce something. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And they did the whole battle of the baggers uh, behind the scenes stuff last year. Where there's like uh, six episodes, I think, covering our race team from inception to championship, and then. You know, I've, I've had a couple of meetings this this past couple of weeks with uh, the marketing team about their plans for this year and having an even more in depth behind the scenes type of series covering me and my brother and and the whole team. So there's going to be a lot of content, a lot of activation, a lot of boots on the ground at Moto America events on behalf of Harley Davidson. They're probably going to have the biggest presence of any manufacturer in the whole series this year, and that's, that's, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. The, uh, you know, the other thing that I really liked and it resonated with me was the fact that your crew, they're all Harley Davidson employees like Bjorn Christensen and, and the guys that are on your team. Um, they, they live it and breathe it because they work for the company. So they really, it really means a lot to them. Um, that's got to be cool to have that much commitment to a, from a company like Harley, other than just the contract and being a factory rider, but they, they embed your team with all their guys. Um, talk about that. And also, if you would, I'm quite fond of Dave Hopkinson, and I believe he's going to be still with you this year. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's funny because yeah, all of them this year are Harley Davidson employees, except for Dave. He's coming on <laughs> yeah, as a contractor. Right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, having, having Bjorn, Jason, that whole crew. I mean, there's, I remember that Dave was telling me that there was a conference call last week where there was 19 people on it talking about the race program and you know there's a couple things that are different first of all I didn't have to be on it right and secondly the amount of people in the company that are focused on this task particularly and 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 that intensely is is pretty amazing um a lot of guys have been at the company for a very long time and they've always wanted to do something like this and now they finally have the opportunity. And I think that's probably one of the coolest things about this whole program is just being able to watch, you know, the guys at the PDC the product development center really flex, you know, what they can do, the capabilities they have. And, um, and then the addition of Dave is, uh, is pretty cool. A guy who's, you know, been on the Ironman TT podium as a, as a bike builder, world Superbike podium, you know, I was the first job when he came over here to the States in March of 2020. And uh, we've grown a great friendship between us and, and a working relationship as well. And um, when it came time to, to make final decisions on what we we're going to do this year, uh, it was pretty natural fit to bring Dave along into the, uh, into the Harley factory team. And he's going to be my chief mechanic and, and him and Jason Modal, who, uh, was my chief mechanic last year are working together right now in Arizona, building up the, the new bikes for this year. So uh, it's pretty cool what we got going. So you've done a lot of years of, you, you've been around this business a lot. You've done a lot of years of racing various bikes and in, including super bikes. You, you've never tested this much either, right? I mean, it's like, I think that no. shows the level of seriousness is how much you, you've actually get to test that bike and make, huge improvements yeah especially last year because we were just so behind like I said it was January they even first reached out to me to start doing this and they had some stuff going but we really had to make quick work of it to get that championship especially being only three rounds so I'm super proud of those guys for what they were able to accomplish from a from an engineering standpoint and yeah, we, it, it took a lot of money too. I mean, we, we went and rented Laguna Seca for two days and rented Road America to make sure that we could get on the pace and, and get us there. And, and uh, you know, we just barely got the leg up on the Indian boys and were able to pull something off. And, you know, there was, there was definitely some drama throughout, but um, I'm excited to have seven races, six rounds, seven races this year year and make a real championship out of it rather than really like a three race kind of triple crown so yeah it's going to be it's going to be good but there's there's all all that much more preparation that has to go into a longer season like that and making sure that we're there to score points every weekend yeah the longer season obviously i mean at least it it allows for 
a little error. You know what I mean? With a three race series, there's no there's no margin for error. So that would uh, I, I would think that sort of helps everybody a little bit, take some of the pressure off. And those guys, um, and those guys, and I'm talking about Indian, they're definitely not going to roll over on this. No, they're going to come back swinging too, and that's man, the, the the old rivalry is truly back. You know, we're we're all fired up to to go beat each other, and I think that's that's what makes the series and the class so much fun to watch is because there's so much on the line from a, from a reputation standpoint, from a, you know, fans, you know, at each other and talking smack, you know, it's just, it's a great little rivalry we got going. Yeah. I think you're um, I think that's right. I think it's, it's, it's a rivalry, the rivalry that's been long in the making. And then this is just, it's not, it's not like I'm a, I'm a Kyle Wyman fan necessarily i think there's those guys as well but i also think there's really like i'm a harley guy and he's an indian guy and that's it yeah no it's yeah it's all there and it's uh you know it's it's so much fun to be a part of it really is you know kyle i'll tell you for me the greatest part of this story i mean the fact that you're a a factory harley davidson rider is incredible but this is not a bs thing coming from you this is not like oh for the for this time being, I'm going to be a Harley guy. You literally have Harley Davidson in, in your DNA. I mean, the fact that your your grandfather Harv and your grandmother Millie created that uh, Harv's Harley Davidson, the, the dealership that still exists and is owned by your mom, it's ingrained in who you are. I mean, you raced flat track on Harleys back in the day. You did the XR 1200 program and leased bikes. You've you've been involved with Harley for a long time. But this time, I mean, you're all in at this point. I actually wondered with your program, um, I think at one point you had texted me a photo and it looked like a dealership. So I actually thought somehow you were going to be racing in baggers and also open a dealership or something. Was that, did I misread that? Man, I don't know what, uh, honestly, I have no idea what you're talking about. You know, they, I don't know if they smoke back there in Ohio, but Sean definitely hits it. Well, well, the cold's getting to him. You know, we, we had, I actually saw negative seven on the dash early this morning as well. So yeah, you know, we knows. could all be losing it a little bit. He knows, but no, you had sent me this photo. It was like this sparkling photo of some Harley's Harley street bikes in front of a dealership. And I got to thinking, oh man, he's going to, he's going to eventually have a dealership, but I'm, I'm serious in this question. And, and I'm sure you've thought about this, you and Travis and your mom and Cody, um, Harv's dealership. Yeah. Are you, are you guys going to take that over at some point? I mean, I'm not trying to push your mom out. You know that, but I just want to know, is that something legacy? I mean, honestly, I don't, I don't know. It's not something I think about all that much to be truthful. I'm sure my mom would love to retire and, and, and be done with it, you know? Um, But she also sees how, you know, how much effort I put into, you know, being a motorcycle racer full time and, you know, that's what she's always pushed for for us too is is having us as really professional flat track racers and we happened upon road racing at some point um but it truly is full circle because you know if if i had taken that traditional route if it was always about being a factory harley davidson rider i would have never gone road racing why would i right right if that, if that was always the end goal i would have continued flat track racing but it's because i went road racing that i am a factory flat track or factory harley davidson rider and that's something that's uh yeah it take it, it's uh pretty special when you really look at how how that path has really turned out you know and and i wouldn't be as good of a bagger rider as i as i am if i didn't spend so much time on super bikes ducatis and yamahas and you know it's all it's all been a part of that growth as a rider. So, I mean, yeah, it definitely uh, makes me feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be right now. Well, let, let's talk about that. And in fact, you know, we, we know that you're an instructor for the Yamaha champion school too. So you teach uh, technique and race craft all the time and, you know, are as much probably a student as you are a, a teacher uh, of all that, but you, how does riding a super bike, how does that translate to riding a bagger. I can't remember if I've ever asked you this before, but does it, did you have to slow yourself down? And I mean, your mind a little bit with the corners approaching and what kind of techniques? I mean, is a lot of it still the same? Is it still about, 
you know, trying to hang off the bike lean angle and, you know, your approach to a turn and braking and all that is a lot of that still the same or is it extremely different? How does that work? Well, it's really just a little bit about maximizing what the bike does well and, and not trying to override it where it doesn't do things well, you know? the thing doesn't stop well because it's 635 pounds. So you want to try to make up time by being the last guy on the brakes. It's going to probably bite you, you know, so just maximizing what the bike does. Well, I think the biggest thing that helps coming from a super bike going to a bagger is that like, you know, you have to ride a super bike with so much intensity and so much physicality that, you know, it's, it's really easier to ride a bagger, you know, for, the race distance, but you know, what, uh, you know, when you, when you come from having to be so close to the limit for so long, it it definitely makes it seem like, well, okay, this is eight laps, you know, like I can do eight sprint laps in a row, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that, uh, that makes it a little bit, you know, a little bit easier on the body, especially with where I am right now, trying to recover from some stuff that's, that's been nagging for a while, but, um, yeah, there's still something for sure that I would like to accomplish on a super bike because there's, there's so much fulfillment and that in that physicality and maximizing what is the most intense motorcycle to ride that I've ever had access to, you know? So it kind of, there's a little bit on both sides of it. Kyle, have you, and I, I, excuse me if I'm being stupid and didn't see anything, but yeah, you haven't crashed one yet, have you? Um, I did actually um, at Road America in the first practice, I missed a gear shift going into turn three and mm-hmm. ran off and, and was not able to gather it up. I ended up low siding it in the gravel, but I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really call that a crash. I mean, I kind of had to just auger the thing into the gravel right just to not go into the wall so um so i guess no really i haven't uh i haven't really crashed one of those things i really don't want to no i'll tell you that (laughs) um i saw tyler crash one at uh, laguna got off at a pretty high rate of speed and was you know got away from the thing but for sure i think for all of us in the class you gotta definitely respect these things you know, because there's a lot of inertia, there's a lot of weight and energy, you know, that we're trying to throw around close to each other. So, you know, there's, there's always respect, you know, for the equipment, but I think even more so with the bagger stuff. Yeah. You don't want 635 pounds landing on you. Yeah. For sure. Um, you, you alluded to this a few minutes ago, but uh, for the people that don't know, you have put a stop to your superbike program uh, to concentrate, to, to focus fully on the Harley Davidson and the King of the Baggers. But, you know, I thought, oh man, finally Kyle's going to, you know, be jumping on planes and flying to the races and, you know, being the big factory star. But I, when we talked last, you're, you're not going to approach it that way. And you're actually still going to be like a bit of a road warrior. Yeah. I want to, I want to, you know, spend some time on the road and see the country with Hannah and, we're getting a toy hauler to drive to the races. And then I want to have our uh, road glide special on the, on the truck and be able to do some street riding along the way. <clears throat> so we want to kind of approach it for sure. on as a little bit of a road trip. And we, re- I think the biggest thing is that we both really like staying at the track, waking up in the paddock or waking up in the camping area at the track and not having to get up and yeah, all, your the there all the time. And, yeah, and good. Hannah getting TV ready in the morning. She's got to get up earlier than me. So, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a hassle if we were trying to get from a hotel. So we decided we wanted to still stay at the track and, and then try to make, make a lot of good use of our time between races and at races that I'm not racing at, which is going to be super difficult adjustment for me, I think is being at places like Coda, VIR, the Ridge, without actually swinging a leg over a bike. So that's going to be strange, but for where I am right now, I've, I've been running a race team for 10 seasons. It's a, it's a long time. It's not, 
you know, it's not as long as some teams have been around, but doing it as a rider and owner at the same time has been a lot of work to keep things going. And, uh, you know, it was obvious towards the end of last year that I was coming to the end of a chapter with, with Ducati and looking to do something new and with Harley there and that opportunity and, you know, don't get me wrong. I pursued a lot of different avenues to, to continue in Superbike for this year, but it just became more and more apparent that, you know, I want to, uh, I want to give Harley my full attention, you know, for 2022, if not longer, and just see what, see what comes up, see what evolves, see how things go. But this is where I am right now. And to me already, it feels like I'm, I'm able to take a breath for once in the preseason. And, you know, that's going to be good for me off the track. So that's the biggest thing right now. You, you mentioned it a minute ago too, that, you know, being at the racetrack when you're not racing, isn't easy. Um, it's not something that you're used to when you took a step back and let um, Tony Elias ride your bike at Laguna Seca. I, I sort of watched that a little bit and I'm not so sure you enjoyed that either. No, at least I, at least I was still racing the bagger. True. You know, True. Right. Um, that was, that was difficult for more than one reason. There was just a lot going on and, you know, everybody wants to know who's riding the bike and everybody wants to ride the bike, you know, and I'm, I'm hurt. I can't really do, that's why we completely just skipped the ridge you know, is, is I just, I was hurt and it's just not, it's just all too much at that time to try to do something. But yeah, I mean, it is difficult, you know, running a team for me has always been a means to an end. It's just, it's just me wanting to get an opportunity to go race. And, you know, it's, I, it, I don't mean to sound selfish, but like, I'm not really that interested in running a team to field other riders. Maybe, maybe I will be in the future, but that's, not my goal my goal is to go racing and grid up you know so that's that's been the focus and <clears throat> right now I can do that without having <laughs> to do all that extra work so I'm gonna do that at least for a year and and see how things go from there and you know I wouldn't say that I'm stepping away from superbike forever I would definitely like to get back and and accomplish more things on one so Kyle, I want to clarify something this past year. Well, for a long time now, but certainly last year when you were driving around the country with driving your own transporter with the big Panera bread logo on the side of it, you had the bike in there, there, you had the equipment, you had all your paddock stuff this year is Harley transporting all that. And you're basically bringing a street bike and Hannah and you guys, you don't have to deal with all that uh, logistics of getting your race stuff to the track. It's, it's being brought there for you. Yeah, Harley has upgraded to a semi for this season. So they're going to be transporting everything as they did last year. But without me having a super bike program, yeah, it's just yeah. us, our stuff, you know, a street bike, scooter, bicycles, maybe dirt, but I don't know, what, whatever we feel like bringing, uh, you know, to, to have some fun. And, you know, it's, yeah, we've been living the dream. We're, we're on the road racing motorcycles full time, but I will tell you, it's, it's a lot tougher when you're, you know, you're, you're waiting till the 11th hour for the bike to be ready to load in the trailer and then you can leave, you know, I'm looking forward to maybe leaving early for some races and moseying our way down to road Atlanta or, or out to the West coast and maybe taking the scenic route a couple of times here and there, you know? So that's the thought anyway. So I want to I want to give the fans a little bit of insight into something um, up up until well we've been trying to get you on this podcast for a little while we've had you on before but we've it's been a while and it's been delayed because obviously Harley had to make their announcement and you were trying to figure some stuff out with your program and now we have you on but in the meantime you pretty, you tried to blow up the internet and pretty much did that day that you showed that photo of you on the M4 Suzuki so. Can you talk about what was going on there? I mean, did you, were you entertaining the possibility of, of joining that team and it didn't happen or riding a Suzuki? I mean, can you give us a little bit as much insight as you can into what was going on? 
Well, yeah, I mean, for sure, going into the off season, the full intention was to continue in Superbike, and whether that was on my own team with a different brand or on another team, those were all options I was looking at. And I did go and test the M4 Suzuki pretty soon after the season, whenever my elbow was a little bit better, actually, <laughs> towards the end of October. Um, I had a really good kind of two thirds of a day out at Chuck Wall on it and worked pretty well with the guys and myself and Cam Peterson were out there ripping around and, you know, given my thoughts on the bike and some feedback that they really, it seemed like they really valued actually. And, um, you know, we were pretty, pretty dead set on doing something. Uh, it didn't work out for, for reasons that I really can't disclose, but yeah. you know, we really, really want to maybe do something in the future. I would like to do something with them in the future. Um, you know, because I do think that, you know, it's, I, I owe myself an opportunity on a, on a super bike that I'm not running also, you know, that, that also can be a, a big benefit. And I think that would be a good option. So we'll just see what happens, you know, in the coming years. And, you know, I'm, I'm right now, I'm just really focused on getting myself in a better place where I'm not so stressed out and you know getting my body sorted and getting things kind of back centered and you know a lot of guys they you know it's impossible to just take a year off from racing and and come back stronger for most people right you know it's really tough there, there's no better way to do it than to to kind of take a year off but also still be racing if that makes sense mm -hmm. you well, know no it, it makes perfect uh, sense it kind of feels like that to me where, you know, I get to take a break, but not really. I've got a big job ahead of me also, but I, to me, it does feel like I get to take a little breath and take a step back. And, you know, I've always said that you got to pull an arrow back to shoot it. And uh, this might just be that little wind up that <laughs> that could be something really good on a super bike again in the future. Well, I would, compare that with uh, Roger Hayden. We talked to him about this. I mean, when he retired, he was, he was kind of a hurting unit and he, he needed to get away from it for a little bit. And he, he got himself back to being more healthy and he felt like, I, I feel like I could ride again, but you know, he hadn't ridden. So he, except he did a little bit of flat track, but you know, he, he got to the point where he felt probably the best he'd, he'd felt in a long time. So for you to kind of stay in the game like this, you, you've definitely got that advantage, but going into the season or as of right well, now, let me say, I yeah. think about that and what Roger said off. Yep. Oh, really? I, think of, okay. I really do. I think about that so often because, you know, it's almost at the point where you take the pressure off yourself for a moment to relax where, you know, your body starts feeling better. Your mind starts feeling stronger and, and all of a sudden you get that itch. And I remember him talking about that. It's like, you know, just a few months into retirement, all those old nagging injuries started to fade away and he started to feel like himself again. And yeah, I feel like I might have the opportunity to do that, but, but I have no intentions of stopping, you know? So that's, it's funny you say that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting to you that resonated with you too. Cause I mean, I, it's funny about Roger, you know, cause it's like he, you feel like you got to stay in it, but at the same time, staying in it is, is pretty difficult when you're, you know, you just can't get ahead of the game with injuries. So let's talk about your fitness right now. Uh, a couple of years ago, you had the issue, well, a long, long standing issue with your neck and the, the disc and got that straightened around. Then you had, you had your, your elbow issue this past year. Um, how are you right now? Fitness wise, is your elbow good? How is your neck? Neck's really good. Uh, it's, that's been good since the surgery, really, since I had the disc replacement elbow is probably about 85% right now, which is wow. really good. I yeah. would say it never, it never got past like 60% during the season. And really until I got the plate out and the screws out at the beginning of December, it still was, it just kept going downhill after the season. So finally getting the hardware out was, uh, a big relief. And, you know, I, I even saw like all my, like my data metrics from like my whoop that takes all my heart rate and HRV and respiratory rate and skin temp and all this stuff that I wear all the time. 
as soon as I got the plate out, my resting heart rate, heart rate went back to normal. It had been elevated since I broke it in June. Wow. And, uh, like all my metrics, yeah, yeah, all my metrics came back within days of getting surgery to get all the hardware out. So there was obviously some, some issues there, but I feel like I'm back on track now. As far as that, I want to go back a little bit to actually riding the King of the Baggers bikes. The class is obviously new. The bikes are relatively new. Um, there's a lot. I mean, you guys have been taking gobs of time off uh, every time you go somewhere that you've been to before. How how much more is there in a bagger? Like, are we going to continue to see this, or or does it reach a certain point where it's 635 pounds and you can just only go so fast? I mean, we we are still taking pretty big chunks out of it. I would say. Um, maybe, you know, towards Laguna, you know, yeah, we're definitely getting close to the limit, but, you know, we haven't had a full off season to make these things better. Kind of like, you know, Indian has going from 20 to 21. So the boys have been pretty hard at work all winter, trying to try and improve, trying to find more lean angle, try to find, you know, a little bit for us, we have struggles with shifting and upshifting and downshifting and just trying to make that more buttery and refined stuff. I think that there's still quite a bit to go, but I don't think we're going to be going seconds faster. Um, I think we will at road Atlanta, but that's because last year we raced on Q fours. And if you remember, we switched to slicks mid season Mm -hmm. last year. I do think there's, there's going to be a couple more, you know, two, three seconds out there for Atlanta, maybe more, but back to road America. I, well, I mean, we're going to see lap records drop at every, every race for sure, but I just don't know if it's going to be huge chunks. Like we saw five, six seconds from, from Laguna 2020 to 2021. Now it seems like there's always, I mean, it seems like the focus on those bikes from both Harley and Indian till this point has been, in like making the bike handle and go around a racetrack better more so than just working on horsepower. Am I right with that or not? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's where the majority of the time is going to come. Of course, Daytona is going to be, is going to be a lot more, you know, horsepower related. Um, for us with an air cooled motorcycle, for us, it's about, you know, mitigating heat. That's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Indian guys don't have that issue with a water cooled power plant. So, you know, that's why the rules are the way they are. You know, we have more displacement because we have the challenges of keeping it cool. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it is a challenge. I can tell you the guys have been out working really hard in, uh, in Arizona at the test track, trying to find ways to, to keep these things cool and, you know, and keep some power all at the same. So I think, uh, for sure, it's still about, lean angle handling, um, but we're getting close. How, why are the, why are the races, the length that they are, is it a product of, like you said, it's, it's hard on these bikes for, for sure. An air cooled bike, it's hard on the tires. I don't know. I guess it's hard on the riders too, but do you think you could go more laps than you do? Or what, what is the limiting factor on the length of time that you guys race? Um, that's a good question. I think we could, we could handle longer races. You know, I think it would be, it would be interesting because right now we have no issues with tire wear. Like it's not a factor like mm. it is on a super bike, you know, eight laps is not going to be, you know, it's not going to be who saves the tire to the end, you know, and that's something that, you know, is really a huge part of super bike racing you know, making the electronics, you know, make the tire last and things like that. So I don't know. I mean, uh, I guess they, I know for one, they want to put our races in a half hour TV time slot. So that is probably part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, for sure that, you know, we could run some longer races, but, you know, I think that uh, people like the sprint format as well. And we don't want to lap anybody twice. Right. Right. Well, that's the thing. I mean, right now there's, there's kind of a huge, hugely disparate uh, performance levels, I guess, obviously some, you know, you've got the back markers 
are truly the back markers. And some of them are on bikes that I got to tell you for their riding position and what they have on that bike, it seems like they could go better than they do. It seems like your bike is more of a proper bagger than some of the ones further back in the field. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it seems like they're even more kind of skirting the rules, not skirting the rules, but going right up to the bumping right up to the limit of the rules. Whereas, you know, your bike still looks like a bagger. It definitely does. And um, do you think you guys could make it more racy or do you want to make sure that you keep that sort of Harley signature or that idea that it, this is what the bike is. You can go buy it in a store. You don't want to stray too far from that. Uh, for sure. You want to be, you know, we're definitely trying to uh, tie it back to product. You know, mm -hmm. For Harley Davidson, they don't go racing unless what they're racing ties directly to product. So that's, that's obviously a priority. Um, but make no mistake these things are super bikes <laughs> you know and like what we're going to see out of these this year at least from our side uh is is a whole nother level of of super bike parts you know whether it's you know quick change stuff or just refinement of different areas to make them easier to work on um it's uh it's pretty special to see what what these guys are doing, how much effort they're putting into making these things proper super bikes without, you know, straying too far from, from production at the same time. Well, it's, in, it's, it's such, such a testament to Harley Davidson because it's such a huge company. And I mean, you have these companies, car companies that have such a long development cycle on models and, you know, they talk about models that you don't see for the longest time and here they, these guys put out a replica of essentially your bike within a few months i mean i don't even know how they do it when it's a company that big with the production lines that they have but huge credit to them that they you know were able to do that it's almost like they have a cottage or a build builder mentality within a huge conglomerate like that it's kind of an incredible thing that's probably one of the most exciting things about what's happening is seeing how quickly they're able to move to, to adjust to the trends and the, and the things that are happening within the market, which is the new rage of performance baggers. So they're recognizing that they need to be active in that space and engage with customers and field a race team. So it's, uh, it's great to see that there's a company wide focus on it. You know, it's not that it's not the product is is against marketing, is against racing, is against this and that. No, everybody's all pushing in the same direction and recognizing the opportunity. And that's that's uh, it's I'm just so honored to be at kind of the at the forefront of it alongside my brother. Oh, and Travis, yes. So, Kyle, you've said obviously that we're not going super bike racing. Has there been any consideration or? about doing the Daytona 200? Uh, there's been consideration, but I'm not gonna do it this year. Okay, because I mean, um, you, you obviously have had success there by winning one of those. And I know you like that watch on your arm. I was wondering if you were gonna try to get one for the other. Uh, maybe next year, okay. maybe next year. And, and I'm also, I'm, I'm interested to see how it shakes out this year with the rule changes and who knows what's gonna happen. You know, I'll, I'll obviously be there. I'll be busy because I got two bagger races and the mission challenge, which we haven't really talked about. We're going to have a little sprint race. Oh yeah. We um, need to talk about that round too. Um, that'll be fun. So I'm really going to grit up three times over the weekend and, you know, I, I don't want to just, you know, I don't want to jeopardize uh, the, the bagger races at the opener. We want to leave there with a points lead and not be, you know, not miss race two because I crashed out of the 200 or something that right. that would never happen. Not like last year. So, mm -hmm. no, I just want to want to focus on on Harley and they've got a lot of really cool stuff going on around the race for Daytona, as you as you can imagine, with bike week. So uh, they're going to keep me pretty busy. You know, Kyle, you had mentioned your brother, Travis, and I, I glad you did, because I want to give a little bit of a shout out to him. We haven't said a lot about him, but we want to emphasize the fact that he's also a factory Harley rider. He's and it's you know, he's in your family. 
Harley Davidson is in your family and Harley Davidson is a family. So it's a whole, whole pretty big family oriented thing. And the reason we haven't really said a lot about him is I, I think the assumption here and what we're expecting is he's going to be racing in other classes beyond baggers. We don't know what it is yet, but we can't really say much about it. And I'm, I'm, we're not going to press you for an answer on that, but um, for, for what he's doing with, with King of the baggers, I mean, full credit to him that he's, He's your teammate on that team. And it's, it's such a cool setup to have it that way. I mean, the, the Wyman brothers, the three of you guys have been, you know, really involved in our paddock for a long time and together as three of, of recent with Cody coming back in. So it's just, it's just great to have you guys on the same team and, and working together like that. It's, it's cool. You, you've got to enjoy that, right? Definitely do. And we keep joking around that we need a third bagger for Cody. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but uh, it's been fun. We've been getting Cody involved with some of the Harley events as well. And uh, Cody's been helping with some of the video shoots and things. He's had his fair share of Harley riding as well. Um, and coming up now that they've released these new uh, ST models, uh, the press launch for it is going to be in a couple weeks down in Arizona. And uh, we're going to be on a racetrack for a Harley production bike launch. Wow. For the first time. And uh, me and my brothers are going to be helping out with that and helping run the uh, run the event along with the Harley, the motor company employees and putting the media out on track at Indy Motorsports Ranch. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that. It's just I can't tell you what it means to have them kind of, you know, follow the lead of the race team, come out to Indy. We're testing at Indy you know, my home track out there where we have our membership in Arizona. There, you know, not only is a race team coming out, the whole motor company is coming out to do the press launch for the new models. So, I mean, it's just, uh, I would say another big part of me committing full-time to Harley is that they've really given me the opportunity to utilize my whole skill set out, you know, outside of just riding the motorcycle. I'm a part of the development. I'm a part of, you know, team structure and press launch and the, the video shoots and, and everything that I've done, even in instruction, you know, we're doing some instruction with the, with the media. I'm able to use everything that I've done for so many years, running a race team and trying to build a brand all within the walls of Harley Davidson. So I don't really feel like I'm missing anything other than riding the crap out of a super bike right now, which is something I will get back to, but I'm truly uh, fulfilled in this opportunity. All right. Well, I, we haven't even talked about the most important Wyman. What's dad going to do? Yeah. What is yeah. <laughs> dad? Right? I, think, I mean, is he going to set up other people's awnings? Well, <laughs> my hope for him is that he can relax a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, depending on what happens with Cody this year, he was really focused on Cody's junior cup program right. last year. Um, Cody's got a couple different options still on the table. We're, we're trying to sort through for his racing this year. And I'm sure my dad will be a part of that in some way, but I hope he can, uh, you know, take a little time to breathe a little bit and, and, and uh, you know, enjoy, enjoy his hard work, which is getting the three of us going, you know, so. Um, yeah, that's, that's my hope for him. All right, Kyle, well, we're going to, uh, we're going to cut you loose. Um, Sean's going to have a few words here to tell some, tell our fans what's up, what's the latest thing we've got going on, but, uh, we, we appreciate you coming on. And I've, uh, honestly, if you didn't make the decision that you made, I might've had to come over and kick you in the nuts because I, uh, I wouldn't want you to see, I wouldn't want you to mess up something that I think is really the perfect setting for you guys to be in. So congratulations on, on making all that work and good job by Harley Davidson for putting this together. But uh, what do you got for us, Sean? Well, I know Kyle Wyman is a big fan of our live pre plus streaming subscription service. So uh, Paul, you made an announcement today that I want to make sure the fans all understand and know about is we have opened up sales for Live Plus for the 22, 2022 championship season. And there's a pre-sale pricing of $89. And you get a lot more this year because you're getting Daytona, uh, you're getting 11 rounds, um, you're getting more baggers races. So there's, there's a lot more going this year for that. And the same thing with our tickets. I mean, if you go onto our website, 
go to our calendar. You can, you can get your tickets for our rounds that are coming up. Most of them, I think, are, are now available to purchase at this point. But, but yeah, I mean, we've got Coda this year. We've got, obviously, Daytona with baggers going to be down there. So there's a lot to see whether you come to our races in person or whether you, or even if you come to our races in person and get live, live plus and watch it while you're there, you can do that too. But, but if you're in an area where you can't be at, at a round and you want to see it, then if you're a live plus uh, customer, you'll be able to see all the practices of all the sessions with great commentary by our teams. And also um, the, the live plus is, is set up in such a way that we've actually added Apple TV this year. So it's, it's a new way to also, you can do Chromecast as well as a Roku and a couple other ways, but a lot of fans have asked about Apple TV and now it's, it's part of the, the package as well. So it's $89 for the preseason sale price. Um, and that's just $8.18 18 per round. It's a great deal. And it's um, the regular price is $109.99, which uh, after March 1st, it's going to go to that. So make sure you get get going before this month of February and get your subscription set up for the year at $89. And uh, it's really easy. You just go onto the website. Um, there's Live Plus connect, uh, buttons on there to make that happen. And we've got an email address that you can go to. And for people that already have it, you're going to be automatically renewed again this year. Um, it's been an, an issue in the past where people didn't really understand this is, uh, I guess it's permission marketing, you can, we can call it. When you sign up for Live Plus, you're going to keep getting renewed until you don't want to be. So you have ample opportunity to opt out if you want to, but I don't know why you would. It keeps getting bigger and better every year. So um, so if, if you're already subscribing, you're going to be uh, resubscribed um, this year automatically and uh, you just have to, if you don't want to do it, you just have to opt out. Um, and there are details about that on the website. So again, Live Plus, get your subscription and also get your tickets for this year to see Mr. Kyle Wyman repeat possibly, but certainly defend his King of the Baggers <laughs> championship as a full factory Harley Davidson rider. Thanks, Kyle. Yeah. Sean, thanks for mentioning uh, the, the live streaming thing, uh, Moto America Live Plus. I, I got some email this morning and one of the one guy was upset that that the price had gone up, but you know it's it we do have more. I mean, we didn't have yeah, as many events last year, and I don't know about you, but eight dollars and eighteen cents per round for what they get. I mean, I I can't leave the house and spend less than eight dollars and eighteen cents every day of the week on something. Uh, yeah. So it's, it, you know, if you think about it that way, it's, there's a lot of entertainment value. You get to keep up with everything that's going on in the series from the time we start till the time we end. And uh, if you're a fan, it's, uh, it's the way to go. So. Yeah. I mean, Paul, you know how much of a fan I am of roller dogs as the convenience store. I think that's only about four hot dogs. I mean, that's, that's just a light lunch for me. So <laughs> come on, you guys. I mean, you're getting a heck of a value. You're getting all these classes throughout the entire weekend practices, qualifying all the races and great commentary from our, our, uh, our team of broadcasters. And, you know, Hey, who knows? It's possible that we might hear Kyle Wyman on our on our live plus doing a little commentary this year. Kyle, I bet you, you probably do that. Wouldn't you? I was going to say, I probably have some free time at, I don't know, five rounds. Yeah. You, and, might, you and, might hear me up there. Yeah. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah. You wrote me into it. All right, boys, thank you very much, and uh, y'all have a good rest of your week. All right. Thanks, guys.